Jason and Tony Butts of Forge Legacy here, and we're very excited about today's topic. Is it too late to talk to my children about porn? Well, the answer is yes in many cases. Oftentimes it can be too late, but- But don't stop here. Yeah, God is in the business of redeeming. Mm. He did it in my life, he's done it in many other people's lives. And so he's in the business of pulling people out of the darkness. It doesn't mean that there won't be natural consequences for not being proactive with this topic with your children. Uh, there will be work ahead, uh, but addressing porn and sexual impurity will dynamically change the outcome mm -hmm. of your children's lives. A great deal of work, like we said, will exist. Whether you've been proactive or are reactive. It's just that if you're reactive with this topic, you're gonna to have more work that has to be put in uh, because now you're, you're dealing with undesirable behaviors and struggles and there will be that feeling of chasing freedom instead of dwelling in mm -hmm. freedom. Mm -hmm. And so if you have been proactive, praise God, that's awesome. If you are just hearing this now and you are learning that you need to be reactive, praise God that you're going to have the opportunity to take action because it doesn't have to end there. It's not a death sentence. It's wake up and take care of it now. So waiting until your child hits puberty is often too late. And in fact, that's the mistake that many parents make, especially ones in churches. In Christianity, a lot of parents believe that they can wait until their child hits puberty or comes close to that before they start having discussions about the opposite sex and the dangers of porn. Oftentimes, that can be too late. And so what we share with you today, we hope it will encourage you, again, to take action. Now, we understand that it's uh, not a risk that you may want to take to talk with your children, but it's worth it. The world, schools, and media, even churches are pushing agendas regarding sexuality at insanely young ages. If you love your kids and have not taken the time to talk with them, make plans now. Don't hesitate to engage your children in this topic. If you're married, make a game plan with your spouse. Make it tonight and take action soon. If you're a single parent, same thing applies. Make a game plan and take action. We will address this topic to a fuller extent in the video, When Should I Talk to My Kids About Sex and Porn? But this one is about, is it too late and what can I do about it? Well, my story is that I was exposed to porn at seven years old, shortly thereafter I became fully addicted to it and it changed my life for the worse. But back in those days, porn was available as magazines, videos, and maybe a pay-per-view channel. It's pretty hard to get. But now it's free. It's up in our faces. It's just a click away on the internet. There's a variety of places that show soft porn, hardcore, and other scandalous images like lingerie and swimming suits that are right at our fingertips and it's a dangerous thing not just for adults but for children as they potentially are on more and more technology as they are becoming educated in fact one of our sons typed in the words star wars because he wanted to search for star wars when at, he was young interestingly at age seven the year jason was addicted to pornography so before he clicked it, he asked me how to spell it to be certain, and he was right. And he clicked, and I saw what came up, and I pushed him out of the way, which scared him. <laughs> it was my quick decision of, Mama Bear, this is a computer screen, and you're not going to see it. <laughs> I don't know that he actually saw it because I pushed him. <laughs> I apologized to him and I explained to him why I did that right after that. But the fact is the enemy of our souls is out to get our kids. He spelled it correctly. 
and what popped up was anything but innocent Star Wars Lego. Yes. Yeah. So again, just proof, our real world experience of how careful we have to be and how something can happen in the blink of an eye. Yeah. So safeguards are important. Be a parent that takes a stand and stand guard for your children's mm -hmm. innocence because it matters now and it will matter in the future and your children will thank you for it. Yeah. I want to read from Proverbs 5, 5 through 23. And this is really scripture that embodies a father speaking to a son, telling him about the dangers of sexual immorality mm -hmm. of an adulterous woman is more of the, the terms, but it, 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 it applies. So listen carefully as I read this through. My son, be attentive to my wisdom. Incline your ear to my understanding that you may keep discretion and your lips may guard knowledge. For the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps follow the path to Shiloh. She does not ponder the path of life. Her ways wander, and she does not know it. Oh, now, oh, sons, listen to me. Do not depart from the words of my mouth. Keep your way far from her, and do not go near the door of her house, lest you give your honors to others. <clears throat> and your years to the merciless, lest strangers take their fill of your strength and your laborers go to the house of the foreigner. And at the end of your life, you groan with your flesh and body consumed and you say, how I hated discipline. And my heart despised reproof. I did not listen to the voice of my teachers or incline my ear to my instructors. I am at the brink of utter ruin in the assembled congregation. Drink water from your cistern, flowing water from your own well. Now, this is talking about a married man drinking, sleeping only with his wife, spending only time with his wife like that. From your own cistern. Yes. Should your springs be scattered abroad, streams of water into the streets, let them be for yourself alone and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed in the, and rejoice in the wife of of your youth. May you be intoxicated with her all the days of your life. Why should you be intoxicated, my son, with a forbidden woman and embrace the bosom of an adulteress? For a man's ways are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all his paths. The iniquities of the wicked ensnare him, and he is held fast in the cords of his sin. He dies for the lack of discipline, and because of his great folly, he is led astray. We pray this scripture over you and declare that you and your family and your lineage would not suffer a son, a daughter, a life that does not submit to the Lord Jesus and stay clear of wicked ways. So when we talk about talking to our kids, it's important to set up safeguards. We need to take a stand and stand guard for the innocence of our children. And keeping them innocent is a good place to be. Yet talking with them appropriately in a healthy way causes them to maintain innocence but have understanding. There are certain things we can do just to put up fences, walls, blocks, whatever you want to call it. And one of those for us was an example of recognizing that I was getting lingerie catalogs in the mail with my name on them years and years ago. It was back when catalogs were prevalent. And immediately I saw that in my boys, I would regularly send them out to get the mail and I didn't want them coming across that even once. That would right. just put a for you, that caused a problem as a young boy. Oh, yes. it, it puts, you know, bells running, ringing maybe in your head or something to that extent. And I didn't want that. So I immediately took that. I took the phone number off of it 
I destroyed the catalog and without the boys knowing or anything. And I called the company and I asked them to remove me from their mailing list. And they, uh, the woman on the other end of the line was floored that I would do such a thing. And yet that's the kind of stand we need to take. There are some times that you may need to take a bigger stand. You know, these walls, these you know, fortify your city, right? Yes. Fortify yeah. your city. Erect walls of of safety. Obviously, as the children grow, they're going to have more experiences where they have to make some decisions for themselves. But when they're innocent and you're building that understanding, be careful you have that that time to build that understanding first. And if, you know, again, if you've blown it and you you've been passive on it or they've gotten into things and you have no idea how, now is the time. Repent to the Lord for your part in it or what you didn't do. Turn 180 degrees. The Lord's in the business of that. And then allow him to guide you to build and repair things. Because the word says he's the restorer of the breach. So if there's a breach, you can, you can guarantee he'll come in and give you wisdom on how to move that. So don't say, oh, it's too late, too bad, too much. Go after it. You need to take purity incredibly seriously, even to the point that you may look foolish in the world's eyes. That's yes. okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yes, you will not be foolish in the Lord's eyes. Technology is changing at a breakneck speed, and it's hard to keep up. Our boys, when they were hitting the teenage years, we were immediately faced with the fact that they were growing in being tech savvy. And, and I'm sure you all face that too. Yeah, and we're all in the same boat with that. And the, the technology exploded and quickly we were left behind. In fact, I had bought into the lie within myself that my boys will never get away with anything because I know that all the ways that a young man could try to get away with porn or hide it in their lives. But again, it was magazines, videos, and scramble channels. Back in your Back day, in it's day. a different world. It's a totally different world now, and I found myself absolutely left behind, scrambling and saying, God, I was foolish to think like this. I thought I had set up parameters and safeguards to love my sons, but I've blown it already because some of this stuff was able to slip in. And even, even the areas where it had nothing to do with porn or anything trashy, the boys were growing exponentially in their ability to use technology and I was falling behind and that told me that if I'm not up to snuff or striving to stay ahead of them, I would fall behind and they would be able to possibly fall into dangers. Yes, and, and we, we just didn't want that for them. And yes. so again, the Lord speaks to his kids says that in John 10, 10, I, I, you know, in, in that verse, to, in the verses, the, the passage to follow, listen to his voice as to how to lead your family and set up these cities, these fortified cities. Yes, yes. So figuratively, at, at that point in time, we talked and we decided with guidance from the Holy Spirit that we really need to lay down some rules of operation in our household, mm -hmm. especially regarding technology. Technology defined as cell phones, iPads, televisions, anything that create that connects to the greater world. Let's define that as technology instead of creating any kind of excuses for it. So we ended up with basically four rules overall. Now, we wanted to make sure that we met the hearts of our sons. It wasn't always about the rules, but the rules were steady. And then we helped have intentional conversations with them and love them because we cared more about their hearts than anything else. That was the purpose of the, those were the purposes mm -hmm. of the rules. Right, right. So rule number one, no technology in bathrooms. For any guys in the house, that included me as well. And I would say for most families, that would include a, guys and girls yes you know that take that to the lord it's probably wisdom to say no technology in bathrooms yes it's mm -hmm. just or behind closed doors you know and if, if we go so far as to say if there's an issue and you know it's an issue with a closed door 
you have one minute to change. You have three minutes to take a shower or four minutes or whatever you find reasonable. It's not because you hate your kids that you do that. Or what if it's for yourself? It's not because you think, well, you know, I, I don't deserve privacy. No, it's that you're loved too much by your heavenly father. Don't allow yourself or your kids to slip up in any way or be tempted beyond what they can bear. So just give them that opportunity to be set up for success and have stringent rules if that's what's needed. Yes, and so regarding bathrooms, technology was a part of that. But like Tony was mentioning, we also decided that young men don't need to spend a lot of time in a bathroom. Mm -mm. So we're, you know, the door can be cracked open. The door could be halfway open, depending on what they needed to do in the bathroom. And showers, frankly, they could be short. There's mm -hmm. no reason to have five, ten minute showers, uh, especially when young men are developing in and out of the bathroom, get on with life. That was mm -hmm. a lot of mm -hmm. what our discussions were. Yeah. Number two, no, no technology in bedrooms. Same rules apply there. Um, I, you know, I was, you know, I know many people that had technology in bath in bedrooms, uh, like a television. That would have been what the problems were back in the day. But now it's cell phones, mm -hmm. iPads, any kind of technology. Mm -hmm. Same thing applies. And so there, there really isn't a need for that. And we've heard of, of kids having, you know, a device under their sheets. Oh, yeah. uh, What is that setting? You know, what kind of success are we setting up for that? So there's just wisdom in setting some major boundaries. You know, they just, some people have a basket in the living room or the kitchen or something and everything needs to go in there at certain times. You know, whatever you know needs to happen do it and don't be ashamed it's because you love your kids absolutely and you love each other do the yes. right thing it'll take a lot of troubles away from your family you start implementing some of these rules or all of them and flushing them out in your family the way you need to number three was that we had uh there were no passwords on technology and if a password per se, like on a phone, to get in a phone was necessary, then we all knew what the password was. Mm -hmm. and password could be changed. Mom and dad could look at it at any time, anywhere. Yes, because it was basically saying, look, this is your device, you're responsible for it, but we get access to it at any time. So this is an open book mm -hmm. and there's no using, you don't get to use any kind of apps that or like a vault and they hide it or they disguise your identity. No, you know, that's there's, off limits. There were times that we had just for safeguard because they hadn't grown fully in understanding where I needed to approve every app that was downloaded or every app that was deleted. That, that you know, there are those options. We have amazing technology for technology. There are, you know, there are different, um, apps that help to protect eyes and yes. if you need some insight into that reach out to us uh, we know of some young men that are finding some better than others to use and yes. we can help point you in that direction too. nothing wrong with using that technology mm -hmm. if you need that that's great for a while we did use some of that technology um, and and that can be a problem because yeah. our boys were not looking at anything but we again wanted to anything bad, you know, but we wanted to make sure that they were, they were protected and safe and had that accountability. And what happened is the software that we used, is that what you would call it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we found it was flagging everything, even, you know, our younger son looking up things about tractors, you know, John Deere tractors and how they work. All of a sudden it's flagging this, but it wasn't showing me enough detail when I was looking at it. And I would call him over and I'd say, what were you looking at? And I would get, I would get, I found myself getting fearful and angst when there was nothing to be an angst about. So there are definitely some that are more fitting than others uh, that wouldn't flag things that don't need to be flagged. It's even okay to say, you know, I know the world in 2023 operates on YouTube and looking things up online and this is just what I need. Well, we've gone so far as to say, no. If you know this is a problem, remember scripture says if your hand causes you to sin, what does it say? Cut it off. Cut it off. Well, how about if your cell phone causes you to sin, 
you don't have access to the internet. Maybe you have a smart you have a smartphone now, maybe you remove all ability to get on the internet. Maybe it's you go back to a, a flip phone. There yeah. are people that we've recommended that to you and you can go, oh, that's really harsh. Well, I'd much prefer that. Right. Then you struggle the rest of your life with something like you used to say, you don't want to be 70 years old. And, and st still dealing with this. Mm -hmm. I, I can't live mm -hmm. because there'd be no more life to live that could outdo all the years of sin and regret. Yeah. So there are choices to make that are very severe at times, but it's all out of love. Yeah, and I think what you brought up, Tony, was a, a perfect example of some of that technology. Now, we are encouraging people to use it. Some of those uh, Christian technologies that help protect eyes and you know, survey where you've been on the internet, go for it. Our experience with some of it was that it flagged some things that weren't, that weren't wicked. The boys weren't looking at any porn or anything else that was terrible. And so I guess the big thing there was, it was about the heart. Mm -hmm. We did get a little anxious or freaked out and concerned about it, mm -hmm. but it always led to a conversation. Mm -hmm. Fairly soon thereafter, we started to understand that, oh, okay, this system is flagging that system. kind of thing. Yeah. I need to quit this system yeah. and go to a different but system. That, but also it wasn't about the rules as much as it was about the hearts yeah. of our sons. Mm -hmm. That's where we're trying to talk about yeah. that balance. Good. Don't ditch good rules yeah. for heartfelt level stuff. Keep good rules, but understand the heart is what ultimately mm -hmm. matters. Yes, yeah. So number four is that we had household rules, consequences for breaking those rules. And that if anybody visited any sites that were inappropriate or downloaded any of that material, there would be consequences because we said as this household, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and that filth is not allowed. Mm -hmm. It yep. is prohibited. Yes, yes. So let's talk a little bit about recognizing teachable moments because I think that's really where it's at when we're looking at, you know, talking to our kids about healthy relationships, healthy sex. Encourage relationships. Encourage them, be a part of those conversations. Talk and reflect on what you've seen that's good and what's not good. You know, as you sit at the dinner table at night, that's a great time. After dinner, driving somewhere, you know, make the most of every opportunity, Ephesians 5 says, because the days are evil. If they were evil in Paul's time when he was writing Ephesians, tell me what they are now. <laughs> right? And so, we must make the most of those opportunities and teach our kids to think about thinking. That's called metacognition in educational psychology. It's really think about what you're doing, think about what others are doing, and then is thinking with the end in mind, is this leading to the direction I want? You know, when I look at a road and if I'm one degree off, I'm gonna end up at a different destination than I had wanted to be at. So. I want to keep that end in mind, live intentionally, and think that way, not only for myself in training my kids, but teach my kids to think that yes. way. So, you know, will this choice help me get to that end? Where could this choice lead? What are the potential outcomes? Those are some questions that we want them ingrained in ourselves, you know, that it's not oh, now I need to sit and reflect on it, but it becomes an automatic. So no matter where kids are at, whether they're at school, they're watching movies, hanging out with friends, they could even be at a youth gathering, everyone. It's so important to recognize that there's healthy and unhealthy things happening all the time. And is it moving me in the direction I want? And is it gonna, you know, I can't make a decision for that couple sitting on the couch making out but I certainly can make that decision for myself and go, mm, that's not gonna lead the way I want. I'm not gonna do that kind of thing. I'm setting up, I'm fortifying a wall here, yes. you know, in my mind. That will help kids make pure choices along the way. When we talk about real life situations with our kids, even movies, right? You can watch movies and you could just watch the movie and shut it off and everybody goes their own way. Or what we've done for years is, 
unpack it. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. so what kinds of things happen? What even, you know, the relationships that happened in the movies mindsets really develop around choices and it's one choice upon the next that mindsets are developed by so these smaller choices add up to larger choices tomorrow so let's be wise about making the most of those teachable moments too walking alongside our kids is so important and then helping them know the long term really helps because why would they want whatever you're wanting for them help them know the why's behind it Give them a buy-in for good choice, good choices. You know, tell them your story. Tell them where you've messed up. Mm -hmm. Tell them where you've succeeded. Tell them where others have messed up. Read them stories. They can be 16 and you can still read them stories, guys. You can go, mm, that's a little weird. I don't think so. I think it's, you know, everybody relates to a story. And so if you chat about something that happened or you've seen this happen, and you ask them, what do they think about that? What an opportunity for them to get an ability to discuss and reflect and you kind of can help their thought process, but then maybe you get that opportunity to slide in your thinking too. And with a 16 year old, you might have a lot less time sometimes. Sometimes they may be open to talking for two hours. Other times it's two minutes or 20 seconds. So read the, you know, read that. But when they're six and they're underfoot most of the time, oh, make the most of those opportunities, right? Make the most of building those mindsets appropriately so that those moments are not missed. Yes, we encourage you to not forsake teachable moments with your children. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're talking about important topics in life and make sure that you are talking about porn and the dangers mm -hmm. of it. It's so important. Start early. Start early when they're young. Even earlier than six oh, may be necessary. And maybe not even about pornography, but the healthy relationships. Yes. You know, moms and dads. And how we talk with one another as moms and dads. Or how mom does this for dad to prepare for whatever event is happening you know, and you explain why you do what you do. And it's healthy and it shows love and it shows tenderness. It's a lot of the stuff that I think we all know, but sometimes it's good to step back, reflect and recalibrate so that you can move forward appropriately. Absolutely. It goes without saying that we as parents are, we have the opportunity to stand in the gap for our children. We are our children's first line of defense. Outside of Jesus, mm. we're it. Yeah. Who else is going to take care of it? Who else is going to speak truth into them and help them be set free? With God, you can create a shield of protection and purity around your children that will bless them for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. mm. Great. Yes. Can we pray? Yes, let's pray. Father in heaven, how good it is to be in your presence. How good it is to be reminded of the things that matter for eternity. Lord, we ask for these dear ones watching this video, tuning in, that they would have the minds of Christ and they would have your hearts to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to teach their children about healthy relationships, teaching their children how to fortify their cities to become wise and discerning and to be able to ward off the enemy's attempt to take them down. Lord, we thank you for the wisdom. We thank you for the knowledge and we thank you for the discernment to walk this out in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, we are so in debt to how good you are to us. Thank you for spilling your blood for us. Thank you for creating the opportunity for us to be able to go to heaven if we choose you to be our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And Father, I know, we know, those that are listening are learning or they already know that this is such a serious situation to make sure that they are not delayed in how they show love to their mm -hmm. children and their family. You, if hesitation is not protection, hesitation is not love mm. and so the things that 
if the hesitation has been there, then repent. Mm -hmm. Repent of it and then take action. Jesus, I'm sorry. You just say that. Jesus, I'm sorry for whatever it is that, that you've hesitated. I've messed up. I need your help to guide my kids. You love them more than I do. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Humility before you, Father, is where it's at. And so we ask that your word go forth, your spirit and presence saturate every parent, every household to, that hears this video, that watches it and says, I need to do something differently. Know that you can take action and that you can trust Jesus to guide you through it all because he is the power, he is the relationship, he is God over all of it. And even if you didn't have those conversations to begin with, have them, have them now. Have them now and trust him through the process. Victory is on its way. Keep stepping forward in faith with him. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we'd like to remind you that we have links below where you can connect with us at Forge a Legacy. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us and follow us on Facebook and any other socials that we are involved in that you can connect with us on. If you need to reach out to us, you have questions or you'd like to connect with us, we would love that as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, we also have resources listed below where we have the link to our book, Back When Porn Was Fun, Freedom From the Chains, where that you can buy that at Amazon in paperback and ebook. And so we have that resource available for you, along with a few other links to some videos on our YouTube channel that are associated with this very topic that really bring it together and complete the teaching. And we encourage you to go and watch those as well. We just want to remind you that no matter what you've been through, where you've been, how you're feeling or what you're even going through right, right now, you are not alone. Mm -hmm. You are not alone. Do whatever it takes to get healed so that you can be all you were destined to be. Do whatever it takes because forging a legacy matters for eternity. God bless. <laughs>